Hey, Helvetat users. Um, so I made a rule last night that I thought maybe other people would um, find interesting, and I thought I would uh, share that with you and explain to you what I did. Uh, basically, what ended up happening is I bought a pergola, and then I put some string lights on it and attached it to a outdoor smart switch, uh, smart outlet, sorry. And basically, I can now say at 10 o'clock at night, turn off the lights. Um, the problem I had was now that my nice pergola is out there that I was actually out there at 10 o'clock at night when I was turning it off and I wanted to stay out there. So I started trying to, trying to think how can I stop the automation from happening but on a case-by-case -case basis. So if I'm sitting out there and it's a nice night and I just want to stay out there that I can just tell uh, my smart home to basically stop um, with the automated, automated routine that night. So two problems with that is I have to remember that the automated routine is going to happen, which is great for me. But if my uh, partner is out there, that she might not remember that. And so I kind of wanted to give some way to give a warning and then execute something. So basically what I came up with is the ability to, um, in my case, I choose one minute before the lights are automatically going to turn off. I basically flash the lights. So turn them off, turn them on, turn them off, turn them on. So that way, if you're outside, it kind of is an indication to you. It's like, hey, just so you know, they're about to be turned off. Then I made it so that I could uh, igni initiate a voice command to Google to tell it to basically turn the routine off. And then I was trying to figure out, how do I tell Google to turn variables on or off? And then that's where the idea for virtual switches, that type of thing. So basically, I'm going to explain to you how I did this. Um, I know you might not do it the same way. hundred different ways to skin a cat. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you the way I did it. Uh, so going to my habitat here, the very first thing I had to do is create a virtual switch. And the reason why I created a virtual switch was I wanted a way to have Google turn a variable to either true or false. And that's the easiest way to do it. So I basically went to my devices and I went to add a virtual device and I called it nighttime routine. And the reason why I called it nighttime routine is I wanted to be able to say, um, turn off nighttime routine, turn on nighttime routine. So it sounds like it, it flows off the tongue. It, it's easy to say, it's easy to remember. It's part of the smart, smart home stuff is trying to remember what it is. So what I basically did was used a, use a generic switch, um, contact switch. So when I chose this and I chose save device and I will just show you the device in here instead of creating another one with the exact same name. So this is called nighttime routine. And in here you can see that it has an off state and an on state and a refresh. So those are basically the only things that you can really get um, the on and off. And then I went to my apps and then I exposed that virtual switch to my Google Home. So I have the Google Home app installed and that's the way you make, you get switches to show up from your Hubitat and make them show up on your Google Home. So basically I added my um, nighttime routine switch to it and then went to my Google Home on my phone and then I added that switch to my home. So just so you know that's what we did it and that gives me the capability of doing this. Okay Google, turn off nighttime routine. All right, turning nighttime routine off. Okay, Google, turn on nighttime routine. Got it. Turning on nighttime routine. So now what that has basically done is this exposed a variable from Hubitat to Google Home and gives me the ability to use verbal commands to set that variable. So now that I have a variable that I can turn on and off, now I need to set up a rule to basically explain how I want things to turn off based on that variable um, so the first thing that I do is at dusk, so as it starts to get, um, a little bit dark outside, I basically have, uh, when the time is sunset minus 30 minutes, so 30 minutes before sunset, I actually have it turn on my driveway light, my patio lanterns, which are the pergola lights, um, and I turn my virtual switch called nighttime routine, I turn it on. And the reason why I turn it on is an important one. We, every time we have a routine running, we want to make sure that routine is always running in a known state. So if I have a routine that automatically shuts the lights off at night 
and there's a variable within there which is called nighttime routine that if it has to be true for it to turn off then we want to make sure we set that to true so that the routine will properly run so i like to do this the nighttime routine gets turned on so every night i know at 30 minutes before sunset um, that nighttime routine gets turned on so that the lights will automatically be turned off when it happens so and i'll explain that a little bit more but if we go back to our apps here I'm just going to, instead of showing you mine, I'm going to create a new one. Um, so let's go to the rule machine here and let's create a new rule and we'll just call this test. And now what do we want to have this trigger on this rule? Let's just pretend it's at um, a certain time of day and uh, let's choose not a specific time. Let's just do sunset. So when the sun uh, or sorry, a specific time, sorry. Uh, let's say we want to have it turn off at 10 o'clock at night. I said 10 o'clock at night. And that's a PM. So now this rule will trigger at 10 PM at night. So then the, ex the, <clears throat> the actions that we want to run, the very first thing we want to run is checking to see if the outside light is on. Because yes, we do turn it on automatically, but I may have been outside already and I know that I'm done for the night and I just turn the light off, the patio lanterns. So if the lights are off, there's no point in even trying to run this routine because they're already off. Um, so basically what I can say is select actions to run and I am going to create a conditional action. And what that conditional action will be is just a simple conditional action because I just want to test one thing. You could do a more complicated conditional, like if the light switch is off and the motion detector is working and it's a Sunday, so you can add in multiple conditions. We're, we're just doing a simple condition here. So that's why we choose a simple conditional action. So in there, basically what we want to do is just say, is a switch on? So I'm going to, for this case, I'm going to use my office lights just so you guys can see on video, um, me turning the lights on and off. but for my obviously for my patio lanterns I would choose my patio lanterns if they're on or off so but in this case just understand I'm using office lights because I want to be able to show you guys a demo at the end of this <clears throat> so if basically the office light is on we want to do this because if the office light isn't on then we don't care about turning it off so I'm done with this condition and then what do we want to do if the office light is on so what we want to do is we want to flash the lights and the reason why we would flash the lights is we want to give a warning to the user that the lights are going to be turning off soon um, so by flashing them off then on off then on again you can give that warning to the user so in here i'm going to say i'm going to control switches and i'm going to turn a switch off i know there's a flash switches option which is a really cool feature in habitat but as far as I understand, your switch has to support the flash function. So it has to be able to accept when you give it a flash command that it knows what to do and that there's programming within the light itself to know, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on. So that is the best thing to use if your switch supports it. Mine doesn't. Um, so I'm just going to be, I'm going to have to write the whole thing out by hand, turn it on, turn it off but just know that that option is available if your, if your um, switch does support it. So the first thing we're gonna do is instead of toggle switches, uh, we can do that, but I like knowing turn the switch off, turn the switch on, that way I can read the um, actions later and I know exactly what it's doing. So I'm gonna say turn the switch off and I'm gonna specify to turn the office light off and I'm done with this action. And so now we turn the office light on I want to actually delay for one second and then I want to turn it back on. And the reason why I wait a second is if I just tell it to turn off, on, off, on, the commands may take a second to get to your hub. So from your hub to your switch. So I just want to really make sure that it's visible to see the light switch turning off and on, off and on. And the reason being, is if all these get to the uh, switch at once, you may not even see the flashes happening. Um, because they're so quick. So I'm going to say delay actions by one second and then I am going to control switches and then I'm going to turn switch on which will be the office light switch here 
and I'm done with this auction. And I'm going to delay for another second. And then I'm going to turn it off again. And it's the office light. And then I'm going to turn it back on again. Or delay for one second and then turn it back on again. Uh, delay actions. Wait for one second. And I'm going to turn it back on. And so basically you can see within this condition here, it says if the office lights is on, then do all this stuff that's going on in here. So the next thing we want to add in here is now it's flash the lights. Now we're going to choose to wait a certain amount of time before actually turning off the real lights. So for in my case, I give it, I give it a minute. So basically I created a delay here and I would normally say wait a minute before turning off all the lights. Um, but then the reason for this, um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to put 10 seconds just so I can show you an example of what this will look like. So put whatever you want in there, five minutes, 10 minutes, that type of thing. And then we add, need to add another conditional in here. And what we need to do now is we need to check the virtual switch to see if it's on or off. Because what that virtual switch holds is whether or not we want to turn off the lights when the routine happens or turn on the light or leave the lights on, sorry. So now we're gonna add a conditional action and it's going to just be a simple one again because we just wanna to check to see is the nighttime routine on or off. And basically if it's off, then we don't want to turn off our lights. So we're just going to see if a switch, which is the nighttime routine switch, If it's on, then we want to turn off the light. So basically we're saying we want to run the nighttime routine if the switch is on. And then we're gonna add some actions for underneath here. So if the nighttime routine is off, then basically what we're just gonna do is we're gonna turn off our patio lanterns. So we're gonna turn switches off, but in this case, it's just gonna be office light just for a demonstration purpose. And done with this action. And so now, this is basically what we have. So I'm gonna say done with actions, go all the way back out and I'm gonna save, save this just so we can go back into it. So we'll go back into our test one. And now you can read exactly how this rule works. So basically when it's 10 o'clock at night, if the, um, and again, substitute this for your patio lanterns. If your patio lanterns are on, then flicker them. So turn them off, turn them on, turn them off, turn them on and then wait for 10 seconds. And the reason why we wait is to see if the user wants to turn the switch on or off because they were just notified, lights are going off in one minute, whatever you set it to. Um, you could even announce that patio lights are going off in one minute um, to the user, but I just wanted to keep this simple. Um, so the nighttime routine is on and then we're gonna turn off the office lights. So basically I'm just gonna run through this and then I'm gonna explain some of this code here. So if I run this condition right now, or the, run these actions right now, the office light is on, and we're just going to assume that the lights are on outside. We don't need to test this. I know this works. Um, but basically it's going to flash the lights because the office lights are on, and then it's going to wait for 10 seconds and turn the office lights off. So that should run when I hit run actions here. Now it's going to wait that 10 seconds. And if I don't change this nighttime routine, it's going to turn off my office lights. Worked perfect. Now the office lights are off. I have to tell Google to turn back on. Okay, Google, turn on office lights. So now what I'm going to do is after it flashes, I'm going to tell it to turn the nighttime routine off. So we're going to run these actions here. Okay, Google, turn off nighttime routine. Okay, turning nighttime routine off. And then if we give it some time here, I'm just gonna refresh this page just so you see that this is now changed. 
and you're going to see over a couple seconds here, I'm going to try and make sure you give it 10 seconds, that the office lights didn't turn off. And the reason why is we turned this nighttime routine virtual switch to the off state. So when you're reading these statements, a conditional statements can be extremely hard to read. The only way to make this as simple to read as possible, ignore the letters or the words in color. So basically say, if nighttime routine is on, turn off the office light. These other colors make it a little bit harder to read. Um, and the reason why they do this is they're showing you the current state of the switch. So the virtual switch nighttime routine is actually in an off state right now. So if I say, okay, Google, turn nighttime routine on. Sure, turning on nighttime routine. So if I refresh this now, you're gonna see that it says it's on. So it's just telling me the current state of the nighttime routine. And then the true and false on the end, all conditional statements um, resolve to either true or false. So it's just trying to tell you right now that if you ran this code right now, it will result to true. Okay, Google, turn off nighttime routine. Got it, turning off nighttime routine. And now if I refresh this, you're gonna see that this statement would result in a false, so it's not gonna turn off the light. So it just helps you to read what would actually happen based on the state that it's in now. So just kind of helping you out there as to what that explains. But that's how I turn off my lights at night. Um, basically testing them, see if they're on, and then making sure I flicker them. I might put a voice out there that says, hey, lights are automatically gonna turn off and um, whatever. But I might not be out there, so I don't always like having voices play uh, when no one's out there. And then the other thing that I had to make sure that I did is making sure that I could add uh, a condition that basically says, if the lights are not off by sunrise, turn them off. Because I might have been out there on a Friday night, um, having a Caesar, enjoying my night, but then I tell it to turn the nighttime routine off, I go inside and then I completely forget about the lights to turn them back off. So what you can do then is do a catch that at sunrise, basically turn the lights off because there will never be a time where you actually need your lights on during sunrise. So even if you're still out there having a party, whatever, it's perfectly fine to turn the lights off at that point in time. So just another piece that you could add into that. Um, you could add it into this rule, but I like to add it into, um, basically I have a at dusk or dawn do crap. So I just added into there that I basically turn off my patio lights. So even if they're already off, all I'm just doing is making sure they're off again. So it's just kind of like a catch just to make sure because again, these are loops that you want to make sure are consistent. Every time it goes through the loop, it's doing exactly the same thing that you want it to do unless you tell it to break out of the loop. But the second you tell it to break out of the loop, you wanna make sure it goes back into that loop the very next night. So hopefully that explains what I did here. Um, hope it gives you some ideas as to what you could do with your system. Um, if you have any questions about it or maybe some questions about how you can run one of your routines, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. Um, more than welcome to help throw, show a video as a response to that. Um, but yeah, um, just figured I'd share that with the community and hope everybody's doing good and staying safe. But um, we'll see you next time.